What's up friends? My name is Luca from Pokemon TCG Austria and today we are here with another picks for nationals. Yeah, you heard it right. Um, and this time I want to show you a Vespiquen Wildplum deck, which had some success lately. Uh, actually, it won UK nationals, uh, piloted by Tamao Cameron, who played a different list uh, than this, but... Um, the intention of Picks for Nationals is to show you a skeleton deck list um, and tweak it for some matchups. That means that we are going to cut some cards, add some cards. Uh, so this 60 card list you're seeing here right now is going to change throughout this video. So right now, first important thing to know about this deck is that there are not that many tech cards you can add to this deck. That means that these 60 cards you see here, this skeleton build, pretty much stays the same. Uh, yeah, the Pokemon line of course. Okay, let's talk about the deck first. Uh, what is the intention of this deck? The intention of this deck is to set up a Vespiquen, or two or three maybe, but two are... Uh, more than enough in most cases, uh, to attack, uh, to uh, set up a Vespiquen and attack with B Revenge for l tons of damage. Uh, actually, the thing is, you're playing 4 4, you're playing 4 Shame, you're playing 4 4 3 Wild Plum. Uh, why Wild Plum, you're asking? The thing is, Wild Plum has a very cool ability, Irritating Pollen, which says that uh, each player can play any item cards um, from his or her hand. So you play Unknown for copies to boost uh, your hand to draw more cards. And the cool thing is that it goes into your disco pile. That means 10 extra damage for Vesper Queen. Uh, of course, one bundle B is very important in a deck like this because you can't get any cards back from a discard pile except for bundle B. You're not allowed to play Versus Seek, you're not allowed to play Puzzle of Time if uh, Valplum is in play, so that means you're going to attack with Bundle B. And because of its uh, Omega Barracks here, you can attack twice with it, with Rotatil. In some matchup, it's quite cool to attack with Burrow as well, for example, against uh, Waylord. Alright, the main uh, intention of this deck is to discard as many cards with Battle Compressor and just get everything turn 1 with Forest of Giant Plants. All the other cards you see here are just setup cards that will help you to get your setup and yeah. So, alright, uh, I think we all know the strategy here and I think that this is a list I played a few months ago. Um, yeah, practically you can't change that much with this deck. But I'm going to show you Tamao Cameron's list who played it like this. He cut two Sycamore, which means 58 cards. He cut one Battle Compressor, which I personally am not a big fan of, because in sometimes you yeah, one one or two Battle Compressors are prized. Um, if you just play three of them, your chances of getting them turn one in your hand are quite low. Um, I mean, you have Ultra Ball for Shame and you have Trainers Mail and stuff, but still, I don't like it that much. I would prefer four. But I'm just going to show you the crazy thing about his Vespa and Wild Plum list was that he tweaked it and he tweaked it in a very interesting kind of way. He played one Lysander, which is, well, uh, I see what he did there. Uh, sometimes you can just Lysander up a big Pokemon onto, uh, uh, from the bench of your opponent and basically win the game because there is no chance that he can retreat that Pokemon. Uh, but you can. You're just allowed to play it once. Maybe you'll get it back with Bumblebee, but actually all of the supporters you see in this deck are meant to be played, just to play, be played once uh, during the game. And he played a crazy ass card, if I'm allowed to say it like that. He played Mrs. Determination. Um, discard a card from your hand, which could be a Pokemon to get extra 10 damage. Uh, if you do, look at the top 8 cards of the deck and put one of them into your hand. And basically the thing is that this card is really cool in this deck. 
because sometimes uh, this deck can be clunky um, and you really want to dig for the last DC you're just playing for. You really want to have the last DC and let's say you just have seven cards in your deck and you can't play a Sycamore because basically you lose the next uh, turn after that. So you just play a Misty, you grab the DC, uh, you have six cards left in your deck, you have everything you wanted and you are able to win the game or stuff like that just for example and he played one a z um so here we have oh no sorry here we have the 60 cards um that tamar cameron used to uh pilot it to the win of uk nationals uh az is really cool because in some in some situations you can use it to get your viplum back to your hand which allows you to play uh item cards during your turn Set it up back again, uh, involve it with Force of Giant Plants, and your opponent is not allowed to play item cards. So AZ can be cool for that. Sometimes the strategy against this deck is to Lysander up the big heavy Vile Plum here, it has free retreat cost. Um, you play two Floatstone, which is a must have in this deck. If you don't play two Floatstone, the chances of getting a Floatstone onto your Vile Plum are very low, and you really need that Floatstone for like everything. Uh, yeah. Um, all right, so he played it like that. He played one chuck. Um, each player shuffles back his or her hand, hand, hand and draws four cards. Uh, yeah, which basically uh, lets you shuffle back your hand to not deck out. Uh, Lysander, as already said, sometimes it can be cool for stalling. Maybe to use it for a Giratina. Maybe uh, if you want to Lysander it up. Um, yeah, and Misty's, as already said. And actually, that means that you just have two Sycamore, which I'm not a big fan of. I think that you don't have any versus Seekers, you have no chance of getting back a supporter, except attacking with Bunnelby, which means you basically waste a turn. Um, yeah, so, and you don't even have it in hand after that, you just shuffle it back into your deck. So that means that I personally would, I think... I would cut the Lysander because it's not that useful. I think I would an, uh, add an Sycamore here. And especially with the new set with Fates Collide, we got a very big supporter card back into the game. And that means we're going to cut the Jux here. And I think you all know what I'm going to add here. We're going to add N. All right, that is super cool. I have no idea where exactly it is. Um... I don't have the new artwork, so maybe that's a problem. Uh, I, I think every... There, uh, here it is. All right, we're going to add an N here. Because N is very entertaining. Ha! <laughs> I'm so funny. No, uh, basically, sometimes you you fall back with this deck, which sounds kind of crazy, but this deck draws very clunky. Um, sometimes... Yeah, I don't know, you have a crappy start hand, uh, you get nothing of your shamans, you don't draw the battle compressors and stuff, so I would cut the judge and I would play M, because it means that you have more cards if you play turn 1, and you can disrupt your opponent if you fall back better than with judge. So I would add N here. Um, one other card, which is quite cool. Let's say, for example, we cut the Misty. No, I'm a big fan of the Misty here. Let's say we play it like Tamau, we, we, we cut one Sycamore, don't play a Lysander, and we are going to play a Revertalizer, if I find some. Uh, how is it called? What's, what's the name of this called? Ver oh. Dang, come on, I really have to look it up now. I'm sorry, Revo. Lattizer, Pokemon, TCG Generations. Yeah, it's from the new generation set. Um, and actually, it is absolutely awesome. Revealatizer. No, come on, you have to. <sighs> and the thing is uh, that it allows you to get back two grass Pokemon from your discard pile. And that means that you can get back um, one Vespaquin and one one Combi. And come on, what's the name of this card in English? I have, okay, uh, Re... But it's, it's Reef. 
Revitalizer, revital. Yeah, here it is. Finally, we got it. All right, revitalizer lets you uh, put two grass Pokemon from a disco pile into your hand. So if you have this card here, and for example, let's say your opponent somehow manages to knock out your Vile Plum, and you really have no Vile Plums left because you discarded all of them with a Battle Compressor, um, you can play it for for uh, Gloom and and a Vile Plum, and let's say you have uh, Oddish in your hand, and you can just evolve it again and play item cards. So uh, most of the time it's used to get back 1-1 one, one Vespiquen just as an additional attacker. So I'm a real big fan of this card in this deck here. Um, and actually the thing is, after that, that's pretty much it. You can talk about this deck. There's, there's nothing else I could tell you here. Uh, actually this is the 60 cards list that I would use if I would go to Nationals. Um, if you're a fan of 4 Battle Compressor, you could cut the Revitalizer here, but, or maybe an Unknown, but I think the 28 Pokemon are very important uh, in this deck. You could maybe cut an Acrobike, because sometimes you just have a very difficult decision, for example, of a, a DCE and your last Sycamore or stuff like that. Um, I think that you could maybe cut one Acrobike here and add a Battle Compressor, and this, ladies and gentlemen, would be the final list of Vestal Queen Wild Plum I would use here. Um, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it. The problem with this deck here is that um, it is if your opponent manages to, to start turn 1 and he knows what you're playing, he'll probably, if he plays that card, he'll probably play Hex Maniac just to disrupt you. Uh, the thing is that you have really big problems against Hex Maniac because you, you abuse, you literally abuse Shaman Axe. Sometimes it happened that I got four of them on my bench turn one just to get the item lock. Uh, and sometimes you really need it because the turn one disruption with Vile Plum is so important for this deck because if you don't get a turn one, your opponent is allowed to set up. And if he manages to set up quite quickly and fast enough, uh, you're screwed because he'll just steamroll you. So um, I really would, uh, yeah, just go turn first in every situation. Uh, let's hope that your opponent doesn't have a hex maniac. Um, to yeah, and that's it. The cool thing is that he can play hex maniac and Lysander in the same turn. So actually he's just allowed to shut, uh, shut off your irritating pollen here and if he doesn't play Catcher, which I don't believe anybody would play right now, maybe Night March, but uh, it's not very favored by many people. Uh, actually, so this Vile Plum here is not going to get an active spot. Um, and yeah, I think that this is a pretty decent build. As I already mentioned, you could play around to try it out with four Sycamore. That means that you have this card. Many have to discard many resources very often. And actually, yeah, I think two are enough, especially with the Acrobike and Trainer's Mail combination. I'm a real big fan, uh, fan of Revitalizer. If you don't have it and you want to play this deck, I would recommend to buy at least one because it's always good to have this card in your collection. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. We're here at 30 minutes now. Um, uh, so yeah, if you have any questions about this deck, feel free to ask uh, maybe at our Facebook page or you can write it directly here in the comments. Uh, I think that Lucas, my buddy, is going to make a Eveltal Sorok Glade deck feature, picks for nationals with the new sets. Uh, with the new set Fates Collide, because some people asked uh, about it. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any feedback for us, any suggestions, anything we could do um, with our channel, let us know. Uh, thanks for watching. We love you, KTX. Bye.